Welcome back to the Sandy Trail. We are actually in the last 10 minutes of episode 2 of season 2. I apologize for the bit delay. After the last video, I literally lost my voice and I'm like, yep, I'm gonna take a week off. But here we are and we have uh, quite a few scenes left to talk about and I think it will be fun to talk about. We should get started. Esther, if our aunt can forgive me... Well, that remains very much in question. I'm sorry, desperately sorry for how I wronged you. But ever since my return to Sanditon, I've done my best to prove to you that I am reformed. This scene was at the same time that Lady Dana was giving a tour to Hannah Lennox. Uh, that where we left off. Esther just wanted to be by herself, away from Edward, like she did not want to be in the room alone with him. He had to get to walk over to her and talk to her in this scene. Does the Colonel's word count for nothing? I barely know the man. I know you all too well. She is not falling for his trap. He's trying to prove that he is innocent now, that he accepted his mistakes, and that he improved himself. And Esther doesn't trust him. She doesn't believe that he's a changed man for the better. But you're not the same woman that you once were. Marriage has transformed you. You carry yourself differently. You have an assurance that you never had before. That's because I escaped your influence. I don't doubt it. The first time that I watched the scene, I was afraid that Edward was trying to get something out of Esther. Uh, especially when he talked about how marriage transformed her. I thought he was like trying to say that in a bad way, like trying to uh, get some uh, details of what she went up to and uh, possibly the fact that she was pregnant and that she lost her baby. Uh, but the way he said it though, like he was impressed, like she was the bold woman, she's not afraid anymore. She's very confident in who she is and uh, in her beauty and what she wants in life. Uh, she wasn't under the control of Edward anymore and he recognized that. But he doesn't know um, about what happened uh, within her first marriage with Lord Babington, uh, with the first daughter that they lost. So if he ever finds out about that, um, I wonder, you know, how he gonna react or if he gonna, like, try to comfort her or try to win her back. Edward, you can't trust him. Uh, he always had those little games that he played. So Esther, at the same time, had to protect her boundary against Edward. Of course, she doesn't want to tell him about um, losing her daughter a few months back. Uh, she needs to protect her secret, her life. Uh, she needs to protect her marriage with Lord Babington. Uh, she needs to protect herself all around against Edward. But the point is, if you can be so utterly changed, is it not possible that I might be too? It is possible for Edward to be a better man, but... He's Edward. <laughs> He's Edward Denham. Uh, it's just who he is. Uh, Esther looking at him like, okay, like, I can give you that point, but at the same time, you Edward, like, I know you, and I know how, how you are, how you act, behave. Like, there's no way that you be a completely different man for the better. Uh, she's not gonna fall for that. Uh, he working very hard to gain back her trust, her friendship, uh, not only as a sister, but more than that. Um, he's trying to ease his way in into her heart once again, and she's not, she's not giving in this time around. A 
Augusta recommended uh, to Charlotte to open the piano to try it out, and Charlotte agreed, and here we are. That piano holds a, an important value to the family. Uh, it brings light back to the house in the scene. Uh, without the piano, there were not much many happy sounds in the house, so just like bringing the house, transforming the house uh, back to life. Uh, those happy tunes from the piano, it brings happy memories, happy times with one another. Uh, if you remember the entire scene when they walk in, um, opening the curtains and opening the piano, uh, letting the sun comes in, uh, it's life. It's very lively, very happy. Um, it can brighten up your mood. And you can see Augusta enjoying the happy tunes that Charlotte is playing. However, Mr. Holborn hears it in the other room and he's like, what is going on? So he must have like a super strict rule, like no piano, like something about the piano bothers him. Uh, so it definitely holds a lot of memories, that piano. And it's kind of like a flashback moment for him. He's like, wow, like the last time a piano was played was, you know, probably when his wife was still alive. Stop. Forgive me, sir. I... This is locked for a reason. Who told you you could play it? Augusta, this has your name written all over it. Oh, boy. So, Augusta, um, if you remember in the beginning of the scene, uh, Augusta told Charlotte because of Leonora, the piano was locked. But it was for a different reason, actually, because that piano must have been played by Mr. Holborn's wife when she was still alive. So since she passed away, uh, he decided to just shut that piano off because it would bring back a lot of those memories of his wife. No, sir. It was I. I asked one of the servants for the key. What is the point in a spinet if not to be played? Augusta, like, oh shoot, I'm in trouble. <laughs> and Charlotte looked over Augusta, like, this is all you. But she wanted to have Augusta um, trouble uh, making things that she just did with the piano. Uh, so that's very heroic <laughs> of Charlotte to do. Uh, she didn't really have to, but these two kids went through a lot, and Charlotte really doesn't want them to deal with any more for the punishment. Leonora interrupted at like the perfect timing. <laughs> She's very lively and I think that's a good thing because if not, the house will be like really dead silent. Leonora, what are you wearing? Miss Hayward said a woman can dress for whatever suits her purpose. She says a girl can be whatever she wants to be. That is again Mr. Coburn beliefs in how to be a woman so you know he's gonna have a talk with Charlotte uh, after this scene uh Charlotte is a very independent woman uh, she believes in equality for both men and women uh, women should have the same freedom to be who they want to be and what they want to do in life and she passing that on to Augusta and Leonora. Uh, Leonora and Charlotte, one thing that they have in common is how to be an independent woman. Um, so, I mean, it's not a bad thing. It's something that Charlotte can uh, relate to and talk to Leonora easily about. With Augusta and Charlotte, Augusta is like at an older age and she knows more things and she understands more things than Leonora. And we found out that they shared that experience of grief. So Charlotte starting to uh, find a way to talk to these girls and get to know them and find some things in common with each one of them and becoming that role model to them if they allow her to be. Uh, that's all what Charlotte wants to do besides being governor. She just wants to be there for them and support them and be a role model for them at the same time. I have tried, Mr. Colvin. And like those before you, you have failed. No, sir. I shall not shoulder that burden alone. 
You told me I'm not here to educate you. But there is much you have to learn. Keep an eye on Leonora in her eavesdropping. Um, it's like one of her secret hiding spots. Good for Charlotte for defending herself. Very confident and very stern toward Mr. Holborn. Not in the disrespectful way, but she got to fight for herself. And she is doing her job, I would say. Um, she, it's not like she entirely ignoring Mr. Holborn's request to teach them how to be ladylike. Like, she did try, right? Um, but she's not going to force them to do things that they don't want to do. Miss Colburn lacks a mother and also a father. She lost the former to the grave and the latter to his work. And Miss Markham, were she to let anyone in, might become a woman of lively intellect, ready to step into society as you desire. But who listens to her? She is showing some dots of truth to him. Um, I think we can all see that since the very beginning. Like, you can see Mr. Holborn very busy in his office writing and just very focused in his office doing the paperwork or whatever he's doing and he didn't really give a lot of time to stop his work and spend more time with Leonora when Leonora uh, rushed into his office um, unannounced. So we can pick up on that, like he doesn't spend enough quality time with Leonora and Augusta. Um, he's like, oh my goodness, like this woman really um, confronting me, like, putting me on the spot, and she doing it, uh, as, like, in a caring way, like, she's not, like, shaming him or judging him, she's just letting him know straight to the bat, and that it's, like, a warning sign, like, you need to be a better father and uncle to these two girls, and she mentioned about Augusta, and she's, like, Augusta is at that age, like, she understands life and how society works, like, if you're not gonna allow her to be the woman and not allow her to, to try and to go out there in society, like, how's she gonna know, how she gonna learn, um, you can't keep these two in this house, uh, forever, uh, these two girls have their own destiny and, they will have their own future, and Augusta is ready to step in, into society. And like she said, like no one wants to uh, spend enough time. Like Mr. Holborn is not spending enough time to get to know Augusta and Leonore and their personality, and get to understand them and see what's best for them and listen to them. I think that's very important. Like listen to what they want. Um, not force them to do the things that they don't want to do. Who even speaks in this house of silence? This mausoleum. So this may be the last lesson I teach in this house, but it is decidedly the most pertinent. You wish to leave? No, I assume you... When Charlotte took it over, she was in control of this conversation. And she's like, I might lose my job, but I'm I'm saying this out of the kindness of my heart. Um, as a nice human being, like, you really need to work on your relationship with your niece and daughter. <laughs> and she's like, really expecting um, him to fire her. It's more than same time. But he didn't. He's like, okay, I like this woman. I like her boldness and uh, she is right. Basically, the way he said, like, tomorrow then is, like, he listened to her. He agreed with her. Like, he really didn't, like, bark at her. Like, he didn't, like... Uh, debate with her, argue with her, so basically he listened and agreed to what she said and that he knew that she was right and basically he allowed her to like, you know, say as it is. Uh, so he didn't fire her, uh, so that showed that he liked her bonus and he liked the way she doing it as a governess. I mean, there, there was some disagreement along the way but he's like, if she can be this tough to me and my daughter and my niece, and like, you know, she might be the best governess that we ever had. Um, 
one thing though, Mr. Hoburn watched Charlotte walk away from the window, and I thought that was very important because as a boss, you know, like usually you don't watch your employee walk away like that. So I think he was very impressed by Charlotte's speech to him. And um, also like the way that they look at each other, like when he said like, oh, like tomorrow then. And he, the way he just like, you know, said that like right to her face and a uh, very confident of like looking um, eye to eye. Um, and and now look, looking through the window as Charlotte uh, leaves the house, um, I thought that very important in a way that, you know, maybe there's something more that he's feeling toward Charlotte. It seems you owe me a shilling, sir. Mr. Whitley warned on the first day of Charlotte's job that there was some uh, gamble, um, play going on, um, uh, a bet on how long Charlotte would stay, and she warned Charlotte, like, you better stay really long because I'm betting my money on this. Um, now we, fi we find out that, um, it was between Mr. Whitley and Mr. Hoburn. I thought that was hilarious. Uh, he really didn't want to give her that chilling. He's like, I can't believe you win this bet and that Charlotte is staying, um, longer than they expected. Uh, good for Charlotte. Um, you know, I, I think she had that fondness for these two girls and she wanted to put up with their attitude <laughs> and uh, at the same time um, help them out uh, to become a uh, young woman and also to be a role model to them because they really don't have anyone to look up to um, a female role model I'm not sure how close they are with Mr. Whitley but now they have Charlotte um, in their life that they can look, look up to and uh, maybe ask advice on certain things in life Why did you lie for me? Why did you lie to me? I wanted you gone. To be replaced by another governess. Then another. I guess I seem to have um, one favorite hiding spot would be like by the tree. Um, it, like it looked like that her go-to spot when she wanted to be alone. But she did this on purpose because she knew that Charlotte uh, leave the property in this direction. So she thumbed up on Charlotte and to have this conversation. And Charlotte, she still have that discipline, uh, authority over her. She's like, why do you lie to me? My parents have been replaced. My home. My whole life. Then forge a new life. A new path. That is what I'm trying to do. I think, like, in a me way, like, grow up. <laughs> like, grow up and be an adult. Like, you are at that age where you are in control of your destiny, your future. You make your own choices. Like Charlotte said, like, make your own path. And I think at the same time, her parents, Augusta parents, will have wanted her to be happy and continue to be educated and be a woman in society and... Do the thing that would make her happy. Uh, so I guess uh, she had that life decision. Like, you know, you have no parents. I mean, at least you have an uncle and you have a cousin. You have a home. Uh, your uncle opened his home to you. Not like you homeless or living in a shelter. Uh, so there are something that a guest has to be grateful for at the same time. But on the other hand, at the same time, uh, she does need to make those life choices. And like Charlotte, like she's starting fresh. She's like, I'm still alive. Uh, I have to continue life. And basically, I guess I have to do the same thing. You're still alive. Like, do what makes you happy. Make most of your life count. Like, you know, you have one life to live and you just need to make the most of it. I didn't lie to you. 
I did used to play for my parents. We did laugh. Half lie, that we call it. Um, <laughs> I guess uh, by the sound of that, like she want to be happy again. Um, her parents are not coming back ever again, so she doesn't want that happiness again. And I'm pretty sure the family want happiness again in the house. And I think that piano was the beginning of that. And you shall again. And the very nice of Charlotte, like, you know, you will laugh again. Like, you will be happy again. Like, don't be sad. Like, there are much more that life will offer you down the road that will bring you happiness and good things um, in your life. Uh, so these two are definitely on that same path. But at the same time, it's kind of, like, a little bit different. Like, Charlotte moving on from a lover, a heartbreak with a lover that um, that she couldn't be with and died. Um, and he left a widow. And Augusta, she had that different kind of grief where she lost both of her parents and her home, um, basically her entire life. And these two um, ladies have to make their own new path in life and decide, you know, what they want in life and what's best for them. Uh, so it's a very interesting parallel of these two ladies. Clara? I thought I'd made it perfectly clear that you were never to darken my doors again. Flora! No! Aunt! Clara shows up. Um, I did not expect her to show up in season two. Uh, Edward, I can understand because he's like uh, an enemy in the show. Uh, but Clara, that was uh, a bit surprising for me when I watched this episode. Um, you can see, like, like if you watch it again, you can see like that <laughs> huge baby bump, and she pregnant, and you know. So as an audience, like you start calculating, like, oh, please don't tell me it's Edward. You can see Esther. She's looking at Clara and seeing that baby bump, and especially what Esther went through a few months back with the loss of her baby daughter. Uh, she's like, you know, oh boy, Clara is pregnant. Like, you know, who's the baby? Uh, like any tie with a baby or a pregnant woman, that gonna stir up some emotion for Esther. I have nowhere else to turn. I have been used and abandoned. That is no concern of ours. Please. I am with child. Oh. It is Edwards! Clara used that catchphrase, um, I'm pregnant, it's Edward's child. Uh, that's a bombshell. <laughs> Lady Donna, I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. Edward trying to show that he's innocent, that he's a better man, and now he's giving us another hope ball, uh, basically like, you know, oh, great, Edward, my nephew, has sex with you, and now you're pregnant. Uh, that's like another, you know, issue, like, piling up. And of course, Lady Donna doesn't like it, uh, especially, like, when it comes to, like, public image, you know, like, you really don't want to tell other people in public about this. Uh, this is, like, a family affair. Like, this is drama, gossip. And, of course, Lady Denham gonna keep it hush-hush. Um, and Edward, like, does he know? He probably doesn't know. Uh, so Clara is struggling, and she has nowhere else to go, no one that can support her. Um, it, it, it looks like Edward ditched her, like he left her and uh, didn't care for her and maybe she never told him that she pregnant with his child. So her last hope was Lady Denim. I'm pretty sure Esther is not liking this at all. Um, like she doesn't have a great relationship with, with Edward. Second, she lost her baby daughter a few months back. And third, and now she's like, great, there's a 
Edward clone <laughs> inside Clever Baby that's about to pop out, and she have to deal with. Um, technically, it's her half nephew, right? Edward and Esther are step sibling, so technically, will be either a step nephew or niece. Um, inside Clara Belly, so yeah, Edward, like anything about Edward is not going away anytime soon for Lady Denim and Esther.